fresh water plummets into the abyss, forming a string of great lakes, inland seas of majesty and wonder. The greatest of them all is Tanganyika. For 10 million years, this cauldron of creation has been brewing new life. From small brown fish have come a treasure trove of living gems, each dancing to a different beat, living every lifestyle you can imagine, and many which you can't. As diverse as they are, they share a common concern for their young, which they've taken to extravagant extremes. They dominate lake life, playing every role, feeding a huge cast of supporting players. Tanganyika is home to one of the evolutionary wonders of the world. From little fish in deep water have come living jewels of the rift. Lake Tanganyika is a 400 mile long tear in the fabric of Africa. It is a creation of the Great Rift, a system of cracks where the Earth's crust has split. The Great Rift sprawls across Africa's living heart, stretching 3,500 miles along faults where tectonic plates are splitting the continent. Mountains soar where molten rock wells up. Valley floors fall away, creating a necklace of lakes. Tanganyika is the largest of these, forming a border between four nations. It's perhaps the oldest and certainly the deepest lake in Africa. The earth yawned and Tanganyika grew. It has slowly filled with sediment, which covers its bottom in a layer nearly three miles thick. Still, it is almost a mile deep, but its depths are lifeless, devoid of oxygen and well beyond the reach of light. Only its surface waters, alternately tossed by storms and illuminated by the tropical sun, have been charged with life. As soon as the lake was born, the forces of evolution began molding new creatures especially suited to life here. Early colonizers came from the rivers which filled the lake. Among them were ones that, millions of years later, would come to dominate it. Tanganyika's new masters were not as powerful as the crocodile, nor as adorable as the otter, but they were destined for success. They were unassuming little fish, called cichlids, and they became everyone's favorites. Unlikely empire builders, they were little fish with guts and a talent for adaptation. They gave rise to more than 200 species that evolved here. The cichlid empire is built on intelligence, adaptability, and a surprising degree of parental care for their young. No one knows when the first cichlids appeared here, but they found few competitors. Tanganyika was the empty stage upon which they performed their evolutionary wonders. Random mutations provided the raw material out of which new species were fashioned. From simple forebears, more specialized cichlids arose, each with its own way of life. The largest of them all, the emperor cichlid, is as long as your arm, 
5,000 times the size of the smallest cichlid, which is no bigger than your thumbnail. Differences in size, habit, and color allow species to coexist. Color is surprisingly important. Cichlids use it to distinguish one species from another. Iridescent hues help females select a mate of the right kind. The importance of color in mate selection may even help to explain how so many species of cichlids could have evolved so quickly. A simple change in color could be the first step in the creation of a new species. Different kinds of rock razor cichlids are distinguished by different colored bands. Here, they're red and white. Rock grazers don't like to leave the protective cover of their rocky lairs. The creation of a sandy beach, piled here by a storm, can split a single population in two and restrict movement between the groups for years. When a new color pattern appears in one group and is favored by the females there when selecting a mate, the difference in color alone could keep red and white and yellow banded rock grazers from interbreeding when they meet again. Adaptable jaws have also helped the cichlids create new species. Cichlids actually have two sets of jaws. The inner one mashes food, leaving the outer one free to evolve specialized teeth, which help them gather every kind of food imaginable. Fine-toothed rasps are for grazing algae. Interlocking spike teeth arm this barracuda cichlid. Miniature chisels provide precise picking for a goby cichlid. And no small fish could wriggle free from the spine tooth trap of a mackerel cichlid. But the function of some teeth is hardly to be believed. This fish is a predator. Its bold black and white banding mimics the coloration of the species upon which it preys. Still another kind of cichlid. It is a classic con artist, dressing like its victims to get in close before ripping them off. Luckily for the prey, it eats only their scales. It's a sophisticated predator, for its prey is not killed, but merely grazed. The victim's scales will soon grow back and can be grazed again. The cichlid's multi-purpose mouth is also a weapon. Opponents first size each other up. If one's mouth is smaller, he'll back down without risking injury. But if they're well matched, they'll engage in mouth-to-mouth -mouth combat. But the cichlid's versatile mouth is not only used to feed or fight. It can be a nursery as well. Mouth brooding is an amazing form of parental care. All cichlids share a deep concern for their young, another key to their success.